Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. Micro strategies in the news. SEC warned by a former advisor, Coinbase and BlackRock. Uh-oh. RBI, Reserve Bank of India. We're going to talk about that. We got American Express Ripple partner, Swift. The countdown is on to a dream scenario, maybe? We're going to look at that as well. And Gary Gensler, will the weaponized case become the the defining moment for XRP? I think Gary Gensler thinks so. And I think I'm going to show you the clip that he even shows you he thinks so. And we're going to take a very measured look today at XRP price chart. Where are the new all-time highs, ladies and gentlemen? Let's roll that beautiful intro and find out. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm feeling charged up today. You can follow us on TikTok and YouTube and Twitter and Facebook at the top of the screen here. We have a $1.066 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. Good afternoon. It's August 4th, 2022. Head on a swivel. It's crypto you never know. Bitcoin right now, 22,900 plus. We see Ethereum, 1,600 plus. Number seven spot right now is XRP sitting at 36 cents with the SEC with a boot on the back of its neck and it hasn't left the top 10. Come on in, XRP. Let's take a look at the range of price right now 37 cents on the bottom 38 on the top it's a pretty tight trading range right here but i want to tell you about this because this is the gold-based alternative to banking hashtag gold five baby that's right gold five being built by gold finance glint pay baby yeah who'd be a central banker and who would trust their judgment They're, they got inflation wrong last year and they may be behind the curve this year too look you should check out this article and it is spot on there are no one to trust in the banking world except yourself and you could do that with glint pay and the gold-based alternative to banking and by the way gold finance hashtag gold fi they're building a bridge guess where to crypto baby that's right be your own bank this world is changing so quickly check out the link underneath the video and i'll tell you talk about things changing quickly Ever since the news broke yesterday of MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor stepping down, the shares for MicroStrategy are surging. Yep, that's how you do it. And I think there's going to be more to come on that front. And speaking of more to come, look at this. I've been telling you Kava 11 was August 31st. Now just moved the date slightly to September 8th. 1700 UTC time, liquidity incoming, get wet. I want to remind you of this right now. Kava is holding strong above 310 million total locked up value, TVL in smart contracts, which means they remain the top leader for the most valuable protocol in the Cosmos ecosystem. Write that down. That's a good, good thing right there. Shout out to Kava. Right here, Deloitte says... Merchants are getting ready for crypto, contains extremely bullish news. It clearly shows that businesses of all sizes are getting ready for all kinds of crypto payments. You don't need to read it. This is what it says. And I'm going to show you evidence of it as we move through the news today. Michael Branch. Give him a follow. He got hacked. This is his new page. Michael at 63140627. You're lost without him. I tell you, Michael is a great influencer in this space. Former advisor to the United States Securities Exchange Commission, J.W. Barrett, has warned the SEC agency would be making a serious mistake if it proceeds with the probe into Coinbase and other major cryptocurrencies. Oh, do tell J.W. Says right here, the SEC reportedly set to move ahead with the investigation into Coinbase over listing crypto assets that it claims classify as unregistered securities. But remember, as we talk, ladies and gentlemen, the SEC cleared Coinbase to do an IPO and now comes back in hindsight and says, hey, some of those things you have on there are actually securities. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, maybe the SEC should get its 
blank together. In an opinion piece for Wall Street Journal, Verrett, who recently served on an advisory committee for the SEC, wrote that the commission would be essentially shooting itself in the foot if it went ahead with what it reportedly wants to do. Verrett wrote the SEC's position the most tokens are secure that most tokens are securities and must register or face enforcement is obtuse. It's also an approach that works to benefit of the scammers and hucksters who have abused the crypto space. He claimed the innovation required a rethinking of federal securities law law that has been in place since the 30s as we know he justified his stance by explaining that the even in crypto if crypto developers wanted to register their projects with the sec as traditional public companies are required to they couldn't Verrett pointed out that crypto projects generally do not have a board ceo or chief financial officer who could file the requisite paperwork with the commission nor he added do they have a proxy voting or shares by mail which the commission still requires companies provide to the shareholders. And Verrett added that the SEC was 10 years late to the game on delivery finan delivering financial statements electronically and was similarly behind the curve in allowing CEOs to share company information over social media. It shouldn't, he warned, make that same mistake with crypto. The professor urges the SEC to build a regulatory regime tailored to the needs of crypto investors and heed the advice of SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, known in the crypto space as Crypto Mom. How about that? I tell you, uh, this isn't over by a long shot. And with the CFTC now stepping up in a very, very big way, courtesy of Rostin Benham and Caroline Pham, that they want to see... Uh, crypto underneath of their watch we'll see how this shakes out here here comes the money ladies and gentlemen coinbase says we are proud to announce a partnership with blackrock blackrock's aladdin clients will now have direct access to crypto markets through coinbase prime <laughs> oh me goodness uh, blackrock trillions of dollars under management huge partners and clients forget about it this if there was any like signal you say to yourself hey is this stuff ever going to clear up are we going to see the fog of war clear off here and get the clarity we need blackrock thinks so or they wouldn't be doing what they just did with coinbase for their customers Revolut launches cryptocurrency service in Singapore, enabling customers to buy, hold, and sell cryptocurrencies instantly through the Revolut app. Things are expanding quickly, and you're going to see more of that. An interesting note in October, open and export cross-border DLT candidate in India's RBI Sandbox, which we just reported on yesterday or the day before, received investments from Temasek, Singapore, and Google and SBI Japan. By the way, Google and SBI, early Ripple investors, come on in. This goes along with it with Reserve Bank of India is deploying blockchain technologies for smoother payments across borders. Open and banking technology partners are Ripple enabled platforms, ladies and gentlemen, come on in. Yeah, let's keep it moving because American Express has been a Ripple partner for a many, many, many years. Very long time. Ripple partner American Express launches Global Pay for cross-border money transfers. Uh, I tell you, it's moments like this I start realizing, you know, it may not look like we're going to get clarity as soon as we want. But somebody at American Express thinks so. Somebody with all the partners and tied into RBI thinks so. Somebody at SBI and Google thinks so. And so on and so on and so on. Isn't it? You're damn right it is. And let's not forget about this. Remember when Swift said we have a go live date for ISO 20022, which is a messaging language right a uniformity that all the different financial institutions and clients and customers need to be on by a certain date which will allow the functionality through that messaging language to access the use and settlement of digital assets they are not iso 20022 
is a hint and a leading indicator that there will be a way to access and settle with digital assets. By the way, very quick note, Ripple and Stellar, only two distributed ledger projects and companies that are members of the ISO 20022 Standards and Body Committee. Keep that in mind as we move forward. New experiments paved way last May to international payments using central bank digital currencies, which will be a very, very big way of moving all this value around. Then I remind you of back in December of 21 last year, SWIFT aims to test the tokenization in 2022. Not just me saying it. This is SWIFT that's told us this. Clearstream, Northern Trust, Settle to participate in all of this. And then to remind you of this, ISO 20022 invites for payments less than six months till CBPR and General go live. This is what we're talking about. And it's supposed to be November this year if things don't change. So we're in August, September, October, November. We're inside three and a half, four months here, ladies and gentlemen. And what will it look like when they do, right? What will that really look like? And what what it reminded me of is the ultimate dream scenario from David Schwartz himself, the CTO of Ripple, when first of all, let's start here when he's asked about the competition of Swift and what if they were to do something and develop it faster and get it to the market and their thousands of banks before you have a chance to. And David Schwartz replied back at the time a year ago or, or whenever this was, uh, 2019, 2020, I don't know. But he said here, that wouldn't be necessary uh, uh, necessarily bad for Ripple, people need to understand. He uses an analogy here to show why it's not bad if Swift does the work themselves. And it's key to understand that because he uses an analogy here that says, imagine if we were in the pre-internet days and Ripple was pitching internet working built on open standards and inclusiveness. The big proprietary information providers could announce improvements in their own walled gardens but that would be no threat to open. Inclusive technologies like the internet, or they could announce that they are going to develop their own roadmap for open inclusive networks that are superior to the ones others are pitching. Well, that's great, David says. We want the best networks possible, and we don't particularly care whose technology they use if they're open and inclusive. See, this is the thing that really lends me to remind everybody that the XRP ledger is a decentralized exchange for all the money. So if they build a great system at Swift, great, but you can still plug in and get the best prices, the fastest settlement for any asset right on the XRP ledger goes on to have the question asked here it says i can see how this would be good for ripple's ideas uh but i'm unclear how this would be good for ripple economy company and its coin xrp possibly explain and david schwartz come back and says here rapid payments create demand for rapid settlement again pointing to the xrp decentralized ledger ripple's positioning xrp as a rapid settlement tool the primary reason Ripple is working in the payment space is because current payment technology isn't good enough to get the benefits of XRP. If SWIFT builds a modern open payment system, then we'll position XRP to settle payments in that system. If SWIFT builds a closed garden, we'll build open systems that can compete with it. There are two reasons we'll win. Open systems eviscerate walled gardens. And two, Swift has no revenue model other than charging their customers and will have to charge them for everything from development to operation. <laughs> Then I remind you of the dream scenario that was shared here back in 2021, December. And it is Joel Katz, David Schwartz saying, my dream scenario is Swift makes a deal with Ripple where all their banks get to use RippleNet for free. Maybe even paying Swift fits our XRP strategy perfectly. Goes on to say, it's possible. Swift doesn't really have any good ability to raise money or seriously innovate, so they are vulnerable. And that's the truth. And this is the moment that we're in. And I can tell you from personal experience in my professional career that as an entrepreneur, you do not need to capture 100% of a market. It's nice. 
But when you're definitely talking about showing somebody that you're a competitor in this market and someone to be dealt with, all you have to capture is, let's say, a few percent, enough to scare them to understand that this will rapidly grow because you extrapolate and go, okay, they got 3%, 5 7 10% in just the last 18 months or the last 24 months. They, then, the, then the actual person or company in the space like a Swift says, listen, this makes much more sense if we go ahead and come together and collaborate. Let's share our client list. Let's share our customer base and get the benefits. And you know what? Then Ripple can say, you know what? That works out for us too. And why don't we split that micro transaction fee that takes place between the two of us? Everybody wins. Then to look right here, and I am reminded of this from the go live date of Swift itself. And this will be open in just one second. Nothing but the best here, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. It's Naveen Gupta. This question is, uh, I guess it's June 2022. Uh, if we speak again, let's say at the end of the calendar year. If we speak again at the end of the calendar year, it's June 2022. So in the next side of six months, four months, four to five months, what progress can we expect, he asked. And basically what he gets is this. Nodes on the network. And what I want to say is normally this, though the network, the growth on the nodes on the network may be incremental, but their effect is step change because after a while you achieve critical mass or escape velocity. And there you have it. And he's talking about being able to come back by the end of this year or early next year to discuss that critical mass tipping point for the nodes and the incremental increase of nodes and that step change that will take place. And he'll be able to share more if he comes back at the end of the year or early next year to discuss what those changes are. And understanding that Swift is going live with ISO 20022, I have to wonder if a part of that step change is in fact swift. But let's look at this before we go. It seems Gary Gensler knows exactly what XRP is designed to do. The question now is, will this weaponized SEC case become the defining moment for XRP using the Reeves test, not the Howey test, when something is a note, meaning when something is money? And could XRP be a stable coin backed not only by the native tokens on the XRP ledger, which are considered to be central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, but also commodities? Listen to what Gary Gensler, of all people, says here in 2018 at MIT. To Philippine peso. That is called a bridge crypto or bridge currency. That's, in fact, what Ripple is trying to do with XRP. So... Ripple is a company that started as a messaging, a payment messaging service to compete with Swift. And that, that messaging service, uh, which we'll talk about more Thursday, has been adopted by many banks. More recently, in 2018, they rolled out a prototype of using a crypto token, XRP, as a bridge currency. I would say yes, it is possible. I think there's an issue also about volatility. So if you're, you're moving fiat dollar to crypto, Bitcoin, XRP to fiat, if you have a lot of volatility, that, uh, that means it's, it's a less, um, it's, it's, it could be costly. But if it's stable value, so you can, you can lower the cost two ways, lowering the volatility of the crypto or lower the time. And uh, XRP believes they have a solution that can be down to seconds. And thus, even if it's volatility, that in seconds it won't move as much. And the friction will be that you have to sell dollars to buy XRP and then sell XRP to buy peso or, or you can interpose any bridge currency. Uh, one of the most significant opportunities for stable value tokens that we'll talk about in a few classes is maybe is what we can call it as a bridge currency for cross-border. Stable value tokens and one of the most promising applications is a bridge currency. 
I tell you, we better brace ourselves because I have said this before I was even a YouTuber. I believe that XRP can be price set or price controlled or have a price floor, whatever makes you most comfortable on how to say it. If enough countries and governments and central banks around the world decide to put their central bank digital currencies and the reserves to back them on the XRP ledger, you better bet your ass that's going to provide a floor price for XRP. And that's a moment I'm waiting on because James Wallace from Ripple, the head of central bank digital currency engagement, says the native token for the XRP ledger is not XRP. It's central bank digital currencies. When can we see all new all-time highs for XRP? I know we're all ready. And I know it's a very difficult job out here for all of the uh, technical analysts charting this stuff, but I greatly appreciate them. And I certainly appreciate Eggrag Crypto, Crypto uh, uh, Coins Kid, and, and Crypto Bull 2020, and all the others that we talk and share here on the channel. Listen to what he says here, because it is very difficult to time these things. But if you look at this, he says, you know, you can look at the yellow time where it could go off here, or we could see more sideways motion happen, and it could be in the green, right? What I love about what they shared here is two sides of this coin. Timing is most challenging aspect in charting. It's nearly impossible to plot the timeline and identify accurate time frame. However, we're just trying to simulate where we're right now. He says, our motions say yellow, but our rationale says green. If we look at this, obviously by 2024, we could be uh, at the end of 2023 going into 24, you could be at a $92 XRP emotionally. But the rationale says that more than likely we could be at about two bucks and then it could pull back and then we could go up to 13 bucks. And by the sometime after 2024, it could be at $83. And you know what else? All of this could be wrong, in fact, just as they admitted themselves. And we could see something happen in the fundamental news in the way of a classification, a ruling in this case that shatters everything that we know but maybe, just maybe, in the best way possible. Before I get out of here, it's not your keys, it's not your crypto. That's why I use Ledger. Right now, 10% off coupon code in the description box, but you gotta click the link to get the deals. Not financial advice, just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.